aliens. I heard somewhere that black people and aliens don't get along. Did you ever hear? Is that like a thing in the black culture? Do you really think aliens is fucking real? I mean, they, they got they got to have well, some of them. Well, how many how many times do you think a black person made an alien? I don't know. Do you know anything? Fuck no! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you, I'm just, I don't know if you guys are telling, not saying something. Uh, who the fuck y'all yeah, think is knows this white people is? Y'all motherfuckers know if it was aliens before us, we mind our motherfucking business. <laughs> you ain't never heard no black people say, I'm just going to go to the moon and fuck with these people in the sky. <laughs> that's white people shit. That ain't all shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, that's probably true. Well, huh? Aliens and black people don't get along. What the fuck that's supposed to be? I don't know. That's just what I heard. That's like something I heard through the grapevine over the years. That's like an old wives' tale or something. You know? I like the way All of my fingers look down, look down, look down. Down, look down, look down, look down, sleep. That's it. Let it go. Let it go. So in a moment, when I count to three, Dark Shark, NASA is planning on going to Mars. And we've got you here, our first Martian, when I count to three. It's one, two, three. Just sit up, open your eyes. Hey there, our first Martian. What's your first impression of the planet Earth here? Me, no, me, no, no. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Me, see, cake, and breakfast. Uh, it doesn't sound good. Did you like it? Itty bitty boy, bitty bitty boy. What's the typical Martian meal going to be? <laughs> Whoa. Okay, what, what did he just say? Errol. Uh, oh, man. I don't know. He has to say it again. I didn't hear it. Say it one more time. <laughs> there you go. And uh, <laughs> what do you think of the women on the planet here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Errol, can you say that? Position on the alien agenda. If they not coming down here to help us fight white supremacy, I don't give a shit about no aliens. Let me say it one more time. If they not coming down here to build no institutions and help us fight white supremacy and stop police brutality, I don't give a damn about reptilians. I don't give a damn about people living under the earth. I don't care about the second dimension, the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension. I don't care about a third galaxy, a fifth galaxy, a sixth galaxy. I don't give a damn about how many flying saucers you Negroes done seen in your backyard while you was high on weed. I don't give a damn. Are these aliens coming to help African people? That's my only question. Because if they not coming to help African people, I don't give a damn about no aliens. Don't be asking me about no pseudoscience bullcrap distracting black people from their immediate problem. Each race has their own lowbrow community, those who we may label as degenerate, right? But there's a cause for our degeneracy, not giving those people at a certain level and age an excuse, but we have a cause and effect of our degeneracy. Because when we go back to a time, and I know people hate reverting back to history, but we have to go back to a time prior to the infestation and disease and contamination of white supremacy, even after slavery, most likely between the 30s and the 60s, where black people where black people were upstanding citizens of their communities and neighborhood and built businesses and towns before the white supremacists came and destroyed, came and flooded, came and stole land. All these atrocities that occur to our people, no one's remembering that everyone is so fixated on present day as though we don't have a shining light in history of all the achievements that black Americans have made over the course of time. And I'm just not talking about the cities that we built. I'm just not talking about the positive injury that we built, but the contributions to America, all the adventures, all the inventions, all of the medical advancements. There's so many examples of our greatness, but the only stigmatization that we're fixated upon is the social segmentation that leads to um, a guilty plea more so than an innocent plea based upon the way society has, has shaped and formed black Americans by the system of white supremacy and those collaborators of white supremacy as well that are non-white. 
that includes black as well. And that has hurt us great. That has hurt us a great deal. What about the mental and emotional distress? What about serving prison time, being incarcerated for a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years? Wrongfully incarcerated and wrongfully accused. See, people don't like to talk about those numbers because I, I hear both sides of the arguments of we are old reparations, 100% on board. We need to be a 100% of an empowering nation of ourselves. There's a lot that we can do. Like when you, when you look up certain things in the internet family, you look at the inner cities, whether it be Atlanta, uh, Chicago, New York, where I'm from, D.C., and you're looking at a lot of these inner cities, and a lot of these so-called hoods and ghettos, when you go in and you look around, there is a lot of trash and things that's around these particular places that we can change, but it starts up here, right? We have been so emotionally distressed and bombarded by the system of white supremacy that I think a lot of our people, we operate, we're functionally operating in a state of anxiety and depression and a sort of post-traumatic stress disorder, okay? Believe it or not, and see, a lot of times when we give, when we when we show the symptoms, when we, <clears throat> a lot of times when we show the symptoms and the causes that the system of white supremacy has done to our people, more so people look for us to pull ourselves up by pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps rather than we had help to get here, we're going to need help to get out of it. And a lot of times people are like, well, a lot of things can't be solved by money. Yes, it can. We need money to go to therapists. We need money to go to psychiatrists. We need money um, to be admitted in certain um, medical facilities in order to get help. And we need a lot of those doctors to be like us, black, black Americans. That way they understand the anxiety and depression and stress that we have been through. Not stating, oh, post-traumatic slave disorder. No, current times, family. Current times. And then when we get into a lot of these False accusations. And I'm going to stay here for a while before I get into the heart of it. How much does it cost us if we even have the means to acquire an appropriate legal defense? Or we're going to get someone right out of law school, someone who has a hundred and something cases that's not going to pay, who is not going to pay close attention to the details that may lead to a mistrial, that may lead to us of a plea of not guilty. There's just so many things there, family. So when people say that black people don't really trust the legal system, the legal system has been an erosion of rust ever since we've been in this country. We've never could depend on a fair and just legal system. And one of the most impactful things of false accusations that have occurred is the racial implications of it. Right. Cases involving race. False accusations can definitely reinforce negative stereotypes and contribute to racial profiling and discrimination, which it has done. But people don't want to hear our issues with that. People don't want to hear our problems with that. They just think that we can fix our own problems, whereas though we didn't create our own problems. We didn't start our own problems. We had help. And we had help along the way. We had false accusations. We had burning and drowning and flooding our towns. But the reason why I wanted to point out those false accusation families is because a lot of those false accusations led to black towns being burned, led to black towns being flooded. Land, a uh, uh, landed, <clears throat> resorted, of land being stolen. Even to this day, there's many cases that you can see, uh, there's many cases that you guys can research of black people still trying to reclaim land that developers and or other folk 
try to steal it from up under them because of some sort of laws that has never been changed over the course of time. I pointed out on another video, there's a 93 year old woman who's out here fighting to keep her home. And these billion dollar investors are coming in stating that a portion of that land is theirs and they're trying to slowly rip away her property. And she doesn't want to sell. See, prior to that, they try to buy her land for, quote unquote, market fair value. Then they try to give her a little bit more than market fair value or what the house is worth. But she doesn't want to sell. She want to keep that land in her family and pass that down as we would like to label as generational wealth. And not sell it away like Bruce's Beach. Now, she has help, thank God, from people who have the financial resources to support her. And that is why I don't want to tie the two in together. But our entertainers, our athletes, um, our elite class, they can do a lot more with their money, which is their money they made. They don't have any obligations. But I would rather use their money than their voice. Can can I can I say that I would rather use their money than their voice? Why is that important? That is important because when you get certain bootlicking Negroes and they ask a very relevant question, I want to point out someone here, which everybody knows that he is a puppet, but nonetheless he gives a great representation of a black person who's prominent, who's in the entertainment sector, and when asked a real question, what are their response? And this is why we can't have entertainers and athletes who are not on code to represent us. Because we serve two different masters. On one side, we serve the master of black empowerment. On the other hand, they serve the master of the almighty dollar. And they don't care what they have to do or what they have to say to get it, to keep it, and retain it. Fair use, fair use. Juneteenth approaching. What would be a useful reparation for black folks to tide us over while we wait for the cash direct deposit? <laughs> Let's see, a useful reparation. You know what? Oh, let me tell you, cancel the crap. Well, first of all, you already see the disrespect, family. You already see the disrespect. He like cash direct payment. <laughs> you guys ever see him on like them shows he on, American Guys Talent? He's laughing on cue. He's such a damn puppet. And this is not a personal attack against Terry Crews. No, this is a personal attack against those who are like him. Those he represent and how they play down serious questions that people are asking them and how they respond. And, 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 and someone asked him a question, what should we receive besides direct cash payments to hold us over until we get the money? And this is his response. Credit. Cancel what you owe. Let me tell you something. That, you know, it's funny because in the Bible, they had oh, um, here we go. There was something like here a, we go. A, they called it the Jubilee. And every seven years, your credits were wiped out. And let me tell you something. Here we go, family. He started bringing up the Bible because... A lot of black people know when you start touching on the Bible, it starts to get into their spirit and they start to change the way they think and transform their thoughts and ideas. And they get into this other realm and like, yeah, he right. He right. We shouldn't be worried about that. We should be worried about our credit. We should be worried about our credit being wiped away. Family, we already have a system to wipe away our credit. It's called go and get all the credit cards you want to get and charge them all up, then file for bankruptcy. Chapter 13. That's what it's called. 
And then I want you to listen to what he says here because it's very important. Okay. It's very important what he's saying. And then after seven years, your credit will be rebuilt. See, we, we do live in a state of jubilee, so to speak, where after seven years, all of our credit could be wiped away. Is he not familiar with chapter 13, him being a millionaire? You would, I think he does. And this is more like a slap in the face to black Americans. It is. Right. Someone asks you a real questions about reparations and what we should be receiving. I'm thinking he's like, you know what? We need better just justice reform. Just, just give us a vague term to tie us over Terry Crews and those who think and act and in his positions of influence. And financial value. Because unfortunately, we have a lot of black Americans that look up to entertainers. We have a lot of black Americans who look up to athletes outside of the athletic realm, outside of the entertainment realm. Now, we can respect their work. We can respect their physical prowess. But outside of that family, seven years, your credits were wiped out. And let me tell you something. You need that. We, we should have kept that because every seven years you get to start over. But the way we do it in America is you keep it forever. And it's ridiculous. And I think that every seven years, we need to cancel all what anybody owes anybody so that everybody can get a fresh start because you deserve it. In fact, everybody on earth is owed a fresh start. So to tide us over, cancel the credit. Anything you owe, let's just cancel that. Family, you know he just hit you guys with the all lives matter. He just hit you guys with the all lives matter. He said everybody. And as I already said it before, after seven years, your credit will be built. You file for bankruptcy anyway. So there's already a system in place, Terry Crews, as he knows. Him being a millionaire in his position, he already knows this family. Again, this is as patronizing as hell. This is as patronizing as hell. This is really an attack on black folk intelligence. Because one, somebody asked him about reparations and what we can use um, as something to tie us over until direct cash payments are deposited. First, he starts to laugh, which is a straight insult and disrespectful because it's not fucking funny, Terry Crews, and those who he represents and people in his realm and people just like him. It's not funny. That's the first thing because there's real black people out here in the community who are hurting. And it's not because they lack intelligence. It's more likely it's because they lack the resources and opportunities because of the system of white supremacy and anti-blackness. That's why. Yeah, they're going to let a couple of Negroes pass like yourself. But as you can tell, family, they let certain Negroes pass. Those who are going to propel this ideology of do for yourself versus demand the system to pay you what you're owed. Now, granted, I'm a huge proponent of do for yourself. Yeah. As you're grounding, as we're, as we're waiting, as we're challenging the system for what's owed to us by the hard work, blood, sweat and tears of our ancestors. Oh yeah. But you should still be doing for self, but one doesn't outweigh the other. Yeah, you should still be doing for self, but you still should be speaking out about reparations. They go hand in hand, family. But it's Negroes like him. You got to watch out for. To tide us over, cancel the credit. Oh Anything you owe, let's just cancel that. Okay? I like that. Oh, my God. Anyway, family, let me move on. So Joe Biden, <laughs> good old Joe, boy, I tell you, he's now realizing or he's getting his uh, statistical reports about how Trump is ahead of him in the polls at 51 percent. And he's sitting at 42 percent because he no longer has the majority of the black vote. And this is why it's so important for the under. It's that's why it's so important for us to understand the plight of the white supremacists. 
Just because Joe Biden was the vice president of Barack Obama does not mean he's does not mean he's pro black. Does not mean that he's going to do anything for black folk. If anything, if you understood what Obama didn't do, then you understand what Biden is not going to do. Unless we apply immense amounts of pressure. Some of you believe, well, we, we need to vote to keep the boogeyman out of the office, which is Donald Trump. So I started to ask people, what uh, legislation did Donald Trump has ever passed through the legislation, through passed through legislation that uh, directly hurt black people, that targeted black people? Did he do stop and frisk? Nope. That was uh, Mayor Giuliani, I believe. Did he did the 1994 crime bill? Oh, I, I think that was Joe Biden and Bill Clinton. But what has Joe Biden do that has been positive? He's allowed people from other countries to invade the American border and to invade black cities and towns to undermine. Because when you really think about what's going on here, family, when you really think about Joe Biden and what he has done for black folk, it has been nothing. What he has done was a bunch of symbolism. A bunch of symbolism, right? He's done a couple of statues. He passed some, a, a, a couple of do-nothing laws. George Floyd and Emmett Till laws that do nothing. I don't, matter of fact, I don't even think the George Floyd law was passed. Now that I think about it. But he did a couple of statues, right? He appointed a couple of black women to cabinet and office. Again, that's good for them. It's not good for black people, or where you got positive representation, you got positive symbolism in the White House, you got positive in, in, in the American government. Who cares? That doesn't help black people. It helps them. Great. They're getting a the paycheck. Kwanji Brown, good job, sister. You're getting a paycheck, but now you're one of the puppets. So when we look at this again from a macro level, because again, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can look at it from a micro level. Take care of yourself, your family, and your community. But once you get to a certain level, family, you're going to have to start doing broad strokes because you're going to have to walk one day out into this world where you're the minority in the grocery store. You're the minority in your neighborhood. You're the minority at an event or function. And there's a system in place to paint a certain picture about you. And folk like this helps to do that by bringing in illegal immigrants with majority being anti-black sentiments that increases the white supremacist numbers. Am I telling you to go vote for Donald Trump? I'm not stating that. I'm a political family and I'm going to beat the drum on that until the day I croak probably. Because I, I really don't see one side that is for us, but we can't paint one side as the boogeyman and the other side as an angel. No. We will not forget what you have done to our people. That is what they're banking on. That's what people like in Florida and Ron DeSantis banking on. Let's just take the slavery out the books. Let's just, yeah, let's just eradicate that. Let's do the old school Nazi German burning the books, but we're going to do it more modern day times. We're just not going to put it in the books. We're going to do it like Texas. Instead of saying slave, we're going to say laborer. Instead of saying slave ships, we're going to say cruise liners. <laughs> but this is what we go through, family. But see, now that he's losing the black vote and he can't plus up his illegal immigrant numbers fast enough before this election is turning, he's now coming up with a new strategy. Biden says he had to use the Trump era funds for the border wall. Ask if various work. He says no. White supremacy takes both sides of the argument. No, I don't want the walls in place, but I just had to use the funds. I just had to. I was forced. Good old Congress told me that money was meant for the border walls, and that is what I had to use for. So you mean to tell me after all these years, Congress said, hey, by 2023, this money has to be used by the border walls, and maybe that's true. And maybe that's true. And that's why it has been a large 
influx of illegal immigrants coming across the borders through these very large caravans, 10 and 15,000 people who are not native to the United States of America and have been dropped off in two of the largest cities in America with two of the largest black populations. And in those cities, dropped them off in the majority black neighborhoods. Now there's some spillage. Now there is some cross-contamination of these people now being dropped off into white neighborhoods, middle-class white neighborhoods. So now you start seeing good old Joe talking about, well, I just had to use the money for the Trump border wall fund. Is that so, Joe? Or is it, you didn't care undermining of black folk, but when white folks start speaking out, you're like, damn, I can't lose the black vote and the white vote. It's something I have to do. President Joe Biden on Thursday defended his administration's decision to waive 26 federal laws, to waive 26 federal laws in South Texas to allow for construction of roughly 20 miles of additional border wall, saying he had no choice but to use the Trump era funding for the barrier to stop illegal migration from Mexico. They said, hey, do these walls work? No. The new construction was announced in June, but the funds were appropriated in 2019 before the Democratic president took office. Biden said he tried to get lawmakers to redirect the money, but Congress refused. Read the, redirect the money to where, Joe? Oh, to illegal immigration? Oh, to Ukraine? Oh, maybe Israel. But definitely not to black folk. Definitely not to the majority of homelessness in America by black Americans, not to empower and to uh, lift them up. Right, Kamala Harris with the lift all act. No, no, not to do that. The money was appropriated for the border wall, Biden said. I can't stop that where you stopped it for three years. All of a sudden, see, a, a lot of times when they give you these stories, these stories, family, you guys are not understanding all of the slits and slides and underways how they go about this thing. He prolonged and delayed this until he could get millions of illegal immigrants in the country, right? And then you're like, wow. Then he drops them off in black cities. Why? That is to disperse the black vote. That is to diminish and decrease the black vote. Because how they're doing this, they're now start giving them identification, ID cards, driver's license, work permits. They enter a country illegally and we're giving them benefits. We're giving them resources. We're giving them apartments. We're giving them monthly stipends by $2,000. You can hear that story up in New York. Listen what's going on, family. Talk to the people out of Chicago. Talk to people out of New York. Talk to the people out of Baltimore. Talk to the people out of D.C. And listen to what they're doing in these neighborhoods. They are eradicating, extracting black folk to the meager community resources and facilities that they have. And they're now housing migrants in them. But they didn't do that for the black homelessness. They didn't do that for the low impoverished who are barely paying their rent, who barely have the opportunities to get a good paying job to pay their rent. They're not doing it for them. They're not doing it for them. They're doing it for people who are illegally in the country and then they start to uh, side talk and double speak about, oh, are black people anti-immigration? No, we're anti-illegal immigration with the undermining of the black community. Because family, they can easily turn this thing legal and start fast-tracking illegal immigrants to be legal when they're coming through the border, but they will still do the same thing. Why isn't, let me ask you this question, I'm going to move on. Why isn't it they don't drop these people off in Wyoming? Huh? Why they don't drop these people off in Utah? Why they don't drop these people off in North Dakota and South Dakota? Why they don't drop these people off in certain parts of Colorado? Certain parts of Wisconsin? You know why and I know why. Because ain't that many of us there. Still, the waiving of federal laws for the construction, 
something all also done when Republican Donald Trump was president, raised questions, particularly because Biden condemned border wall spending when he was running for the White House. One of Biden's first decision moves as president was to halt the use of emergency funds to build the wall along the southern border and ended the national emergency there. The decision comes as Biden administration is struggling to manage increasing numbers of migrants at the border and spreading out in the larger U.S. Democratic leaders in New York, Chicago and Washington are asking for federal help to handle the growing numbers of migrants in their city. When they say migrants, they mean illegal migrants. When they say migrants, they mean illegal immigrants. Administration officials on Thursday announced. They'll resume, they'll resume deporting migrants back to Venezuela as part of their effort to slow arrivals. Wait a minute. Why all of a sudden you guys are deporting them? That has nothing to do with the building of the border wall, does it not? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and build the extra 20 miles of the border wall. But why are you now deporting them? You let over a half a million Venezuelans over, okay? And they're pinpointing Venezuelans, but family, there's all sorts of people here. OK, Mexicans, Venezuelan, um, people from Honduras, uh, Costa Rica, Colombia, Central America, South America, all these people are coming through the border. Indian people from India is coming through the Mexican border. OK, Chinese people are coming through the Mexican border. So don't just let them pinpoint one country line. We ain't doing that. We, we calling everybody out. It says Republicans, for their part, are hammering the president as ineffective on border policy, with some suggesting that they would not fund any more efforts in Ukraine without a substantial increase to border security funding. <laughs> what are the Republicans anti-white? Are the Republicans anti-European or the Republicans on this one point being pro-America? On this one point, are they being pro-American? Does this help black people in some sort of way? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. See, when, when they start talking about, oh, boy, well, black folk ain't going to go out there in the field and pick fruit. Uh, black people ain't going to do no construction work and build houses in the heat in the sun. Yes, they will. And yes, they have. Who do you think built America? Black Americans. Who do you think was the farmers of America? Black Americans. Before our land was stolen. We was doing these jobs, family. But what they did was they said, hey, we can just hire illegals and fire the black folk because we got to pay the black folk minimum wage at least. We're talking about eight, nine, ten dollars throughout the course of time. Eight, nine, ten, twelve, fifteen dollars. And we can just pay these illegals three, four dollars an hour. We can make three times the amount. That's what's going on, family. You see all these construction workers that speak Spanish. They're not getting paid as much as a citizen. They're not. They're not getting paid as much as a citizen would for their hours work. They're not getting adequate rest breaks. That's why these houses and communities and neighborhoods are popping up in like one to three months. You're like, damn, they built that whole neighborhood in three months. And they just moving on with the next family. So again, on this one thing, seems to be Republicans are being pro-American. With the exception of the January 6th. But anyway, um, the decision was met with immediate criticism from immigrant advocates and Mexico President Andreas Manuel Lopez Abador, who called it a setback. Is that right? It is a setback because it does not resolve the problem, he said Thursday. Lopez have frequently praised Biden in the past because he is the first U.S. president in a long time who has built, who has not built any walls. Wait a minute. We got the Mexican president praising Joe Biden because he is not protecting his own country's border. Are you freaking kidding me? One president is giving a virtual clap on the back of Joe Biden because he hasn't he was the only president that hasn't built any border security, any border walls, any uh, border barriers, any border impediment of people just crossing over by the way of a small river, a small river and bank. Are you serious? Family, that should tell you right there that this is not the guy for America. This is not him. 
You have another president is applauding Joe Biden because he hasn't set up any barriers from people who is trespassing from his country of Mexico into the United States of America, which is supposedly be the most powerful country in the world. But we have a Mexican president applauding that. Like, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we rock with Joe Biden because what happens is all these South American and Central American and Asian um, people come over through the border of Mexico and they pass all right through Mexico and go right into America. And we're like, hasta la vista, baby. Adios, mi amigos. That's what they're doing. He just letting them right in. Because here's the thing. Why would you be the president of Mexico and applaud another president for not protecting their border? It, you, you ever thought about that? Why, why would he do that? Why would he do that? Does that make any sense, family? Exactly. It does not. The Department of Homeland Security posted the announcement of the latest wall action in the Federal Registry. With few details about the construction in Star County, Texas, part of a busy Border Patrol sector seeing high illegal entry, okay, high illegal entry, according to the government data, about 245,000 illegal crossings have been recorded so far this budget year in the Rio Grande Valley sector. It is among the biggest for border crossings in the nation. Emotional outbursts at times so heated, police had to step in. We're talking about city council today. And fair use, to fair use. $51 million on helping migrants here in Chicago. CBS2 political investigator Dana Kosloff was there for all the action, action and Dana strong feelings all around. Yeah, Erica, and for many different reasons, among them the fact that this $51 million approved today is only a short-term fix and more money will be needed in just weeks. We cannot continue to falsely pit communities against one another. Deep emotional wounds coming to the surface. As black people who have been hurt continuously by the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else and anger we don't want to have to recall anybody we sister stop crying there's no need for them to see your tears you need this you need to show them power not tears don't show them weakness show them strength i don't want to have to protest anybody but we are not going to be ignored brandon mayor john there you go sister see that's power Base in her voice there you go sister this is the one time where sister can kind of be a little masculine in my opinion okay Johnson. Many in Chicago's black community and the city council speaking out against spending $51 million to house migrants, asking when will the help for them finally become a reality. And it cannot be put on the backs of the residents of Chicago without showing them that they're getting something out of this. Mayor Brandon Johnson presiding over his second full city council meeting had to ask for calm more than once. With a sergeant of arms. Please restore some order. Police on the Sergeant of Arms, please restore. Man, get your. Also intervening at one point to allow the meeting to proceed. Ultimately, the measure passed with 34 votes. Many who voted to approve the money, like 49th Ward Alderwoman Maria Haddon, call this an immediate crisis that needs attention. But, she says, so do concerns of the city's black residents. Why are black people in Chicago and some communities so angry? Why, why is all this kind of anti-immigrant sentiment coming up? And I want to explain to folks. It See, family, I don't, want the, I don't want her to get a pass on that because she said, why is all this anti-immigrant sentiment coming up? There's one word she failed to say, anti-illegal immigrant sentiment, anti-illegal sentiment. Now, she did say she is going to say the point here. She is going to talk about the lack of resources that has been provided to the black community. But again, she's one of the people that passed the bill in order for them to get fifty one million dollars to support them versus voting no and to ship them back to their home countries to deport them back to their home country. No, she didn't vote on that. She vote to pass it. You should be voting for money to bust and fly them and deport them back to their country. That's what you should be doing. Not pass for funding to house them there in Chicago, to house them there in Illinois, to house them there in the black 49th Ward District. It's because if we cared as much about black people, 
and had over the decades, as we do about everyone else, we wouldn't be here. But the money from is bullshit, family, because she states that after she already voted for the money to be approved, for the funding to be approved. So now they're now they're stating how 51 million is just for one month. Right. And this this video, believe it or not, family was four months ago. So if I can just kind of do a quick estimate, what? We're looking at $204 million that's possibly that has been spent on illegal immigration of housing and services for them in Chicago alone. If, if, if I'm just kind of basing off the one number, the, the number one figure that they've given during this video. A 2021 budget surplus will only last one month. Many older people say it's time for a long-term plan. Hold on, let me, let me back that up. federal help. Let Plus will only last one month. Many older people. Gates, as we do about everyone else, we wouldn't be here. But the money from a 2021 budget surplus will only last one month. Many older people say it's time for a long-term plan and some state and federal help. With that, should taxpayers be concerned? Um, I think we should all be concerned anytime we're having to utilize this level of resources on a, on a temporary situation, especially with, uh, with not a real site of federal support coming. Hours after the meeting. That's the problem right there. Should taxpayers be concerned? Absolutely. But he's right. Everybody should be concerned. But the other part talking about waiting for federal support, federal support to ship them back to their countries. And have them to come to America by legal means. But family, hey, listen, I don't know what black people are doing out here, but we're getting distracted very easily. And we need to stay on code and we need to stay on focus. Because we are slowly being replaced slowly being replaced by other groups. So you shouldn't have no allegiances. You shouldn't have uh, no commitments. You shouldn't have no binding contract with any of these political parties. Until they show and prove, black empowerment on code should be the only blueprint for our survival. B1.